and join us as we enter into the Holy of Holies tonight. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can we just begin to worship and exalt His name tonight? Can we enter with a praise tonight in our hearts? Can we enter with a praise on our lips tonight to the King of Kings and to the Lord of Lords? Hallelujah. 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 He's been so good. He's been so good. Father, you've been so good tonight, God. Oh, new mercies I see every morning, God. New mercies I see every morning, God. Father, there is none like you. None can compare unto you tonight, Father. Oh, Abba Father, most worthy of my praise, most worthy of my worship. I give it all to you tonight, Jesus. I open up my mouth and I lift my hands to you tonight, Father. For you deserve it all. You deserve it all tonight, God. So I give it all tonight, Jesus. Oh, you're worthy, worthy of my praise, worthy of my worship, God. When I think of your goodness and your love, God, towards me. When I think of your steadfast love towards me, God. When I think of your goodness, oh God, and your great mercies towards me, God. There is nothing else to do but stand and say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for who you are tonight, Father. Thank you for who you are tonight, Father. You've been so good. You've been so good. So I lift up a praise in this house tonight, God. I lift up a shout out to you tonight, God, because you've been so good. And it's who you are tonight, Jesus. It's who you are. Your love never fails tonight, God. Your love never fails tonight, Jesus. I thank you for who you are tonight, God. And that's reason to give you praise. That's reason to give you worship tonight, God. That's reason to open up my mouth and lift my hands in your presence, God. That's reason, oh God, for me to give a shout of praise unto you tonight, God. Because of who you are. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, you've been good. You've been good tonight, Jesus. Just want to thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I just want to thank you. I just want to thank you. I just want. To thank you, Lord. Can we sing that? Thank you, Lord. I just want.
place of privilege you worship Lord, just stand in your presence.
Father, you reign and you rule tonight, God. You reign and you rule tonight, Father. In all your goodness and your love. You are sovereign, God. You reign tonight, God. We say take your rightful place among us tonight, God. Take your rightful place among us tonight. As we create this space for you. It's only for you tonight, God. An audience of one. Oh, we thank you, Jesus, for who you are tonight, God. Let the king of my heart be the mountain where I run. The Let the king of my heart be the shadow where I hide, the ransom for my life. Oh, he is my. Come on, let's do one more time. Let the king of my heart be the mountain where I run, the fountain, the fountain I drink from. Oh, he is my song, and let the king of my heart oh, be the shadow where I hide, the ransom, the ransom for my life. Oh, he is So we declare it. He's good. You are good. You're good. Oh, Can somebody just declare he's good tonight? Can we just declare his goodness? Can we just proclaim his goodness? Can we just proclaim his goodness tonight? Father, we worship for who you are. We thank you, Jesus. He's faithful to give us 
If that's the God you serve, come on, let me hear a shout of praise. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, you're so good tonight. You're steadfast, God. You're steadfast, God. You're a faithful God. Faithful to perform every word tonight. Oh, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Thank you for who you are, Jesus. Thank you for who you are tonight, God. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Never gonna let down you're never gonna let never gonna let us down you're never gonna let never gonna let us down you're never gonna let never gonna let us down cause you are good you're good Oh, you are good, you're good. Oh, you are good, you're good. Oh, you are good, you're good. Oh, can we sing that, sing you are good. You're good. Oh, you are. Yes, God. You're good. Oh, you are good. You're good. Oh, you are good. You're good. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your mercy that keeps following us all the days of our life. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your mercy following me. All the days of my life. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your mercy. Following me. All the days of my life. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your mercy following me all the days of my life all the days of my life all the days of my life goodness and mercy all the days of my life mm. days of my life fire all the days of our lives, your goodness and mercy, all the days of my life, all the days of my life, all the days of my life, goodness and mercy, all the days of my life. All the days of our lives, all the days of our lives, your goodness and mercy, all the days of my life, you keep following, following, Shia. you keep following. 
You keep following me, You keep following me, shut up, You keep following me. You keep following me all the days of my life. Surely goodness and mercy, Lord. When I look on my side, Lord, when we look on our side, Lord, ever present, Lord, your goodness and mercy. Your goodness and mercy, our entourage, Lord, all the days of our lives, Lord. of our lives, Lord, goodness and mercy are on our left and right flank, Lord. <laughs> and we will dwell in your house yeah, forever. We'll dwell in your house forever. Dwell in your house Forever, we'll dwell in your house. Forever, we'll dwell in your house. Forever, in your presence, Lord, we live, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for your presence, Lord. Ever. Sure. Ever, ever praising you in your presence. Bless are those who dwell in your house. They will ever be praising you. Bless are those who strength is in 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 you. Bless are those whose strength is in you. Forever. Yeah. Father, we renew our position in you tonight. We place ourselves flat footed, Lord, on your promises and in your presence, Lord. For it's from there, Lord, we draw strength, Lord. From there, we draw strength draw joy, Lord. From there, we draw sustenance, Lord. We repent for times where we stood off of your wheel. Father, we come back on. Shape us, fashion us, Lord, so that we can be able to hold and obtain your divinity, Lord. Ah, yeah. Keep us, Lord. Ah, yeah. In the cleft of your rock. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In the cleft of your rock. Well, we see your glory with unveiled faces. Ah, yeah. In the cleft of your rock. In the cleft of your rock. Not like in the days of Moses, Lord, where things was different. But now, Lord, we are with unveiled faces. We get to behold who you are, Lord. We make our position, Lord, before you, Lord. Totally open and exposed to you. Thank you for your presence, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We honor you. We magnify you. We glorify you. 
we extol you. We make you great, Lord, in the presence of your people, Lord. We shout your name in your congregation of the righteous, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 I know this is just an announcement, but if you could take this time and just extend yourself to the Lord, something is in your midst. And it's like I'm trying to go forward, but I feel like the Lord is visiting his people. And it would be wrong of us to have him in the midst and not interact with him right now. So right now, wherever you are right now, I'm, I implore you to reach out to him in the raw, pure form. Let him hear your heart right now. Shayana. Ayena naya. Ora yena yasa. Oya na yasa. Yena yena. Shayana yoneya. Ayena. Ada na na na. Ada, we made it for the appointment, girl. Shayena. Aya ya ya ya. Hear the cry from your people, Lord. I, uh, we pour out praise like all to you, yeah, yeah, yeah. We pour out praise like all to you, Lord. We pour out praise like all to you, Lord. We pour out praise like all to you. To you, Lord, we pour praise like all. To you, oh God, we pour praise like all. Hear your people cry to you. We pour praise like all. This is the meeting grounds. He said, I booked this meeting with you tonight. Hey, my schedule is for you.
whatever you want to do tonight, God, that's all right with us. This is your house anyway. This is your sanctuary. We are your people and you are our God. Wherever you want to speak, Lord Jesus, we're willing to hear. We're willing to hear, Lord, and we open ourselves, Lord. We empty things that even might try to clutter, Lord, Father. We remove that in Jesus' name by your pipe, by your might, by your power, Lord. We wait to hear whatever it is you want to say. Speak freely, Holy Spirit. Speak freely, dear Father. You do what you want. You flex your might in this house, Lord. We are here for your presentation, Lord, made to us, Lord. And we, in turn, will obey. We will hear and obey what you're going to do, what you tell us to do. Allah, in Jesus' name. You are the yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Good evening, town family. It's kind of a little hard to navigate. <laughs> but we let God do what you, not letting God do, God in charge. This is his place. There's a scripture verse that says, our God is in the heavens and he does whatever he pleases. And he does whatever he pleases here. We're not going to be no obstacle to what he does tonight. Amen, church. Ah, let's honor him tonight with our hand. Man. Put your hands together for him. Hallelujah. Good evening, Tom family. Wow. God is worthy. You may have your seats if you can. If you want to stand, that's totally fine. Totally, totally fine. Let me get through with these announcements to you in this atmosphere. I think God has something in store and I'm going to get out of the way. Ha. So remember guys, Acts Bible School begins this Thursday at 5.45 p.m. So the new semester is on this Thursday and we're excited to see what God is about to do. Amen, church? Amen, church. Let's jump right into another form of our worship, which is given. And I just want to touch on Exodus 10, uh, verse 24 and verse 25. This is the account where Pharaoh, God was telling Pharaoh to let my people go. Then Pharaoh summoned Moses and said, go worship the Lord. Even your women and children may go with you. Only leave your flocks and herds behind. But Moses said in verse 25, You must allow us to have sacrifices and burnt offerings to present to the Lord our God. Our livestock too must go with us. Not a hoof is to be left behind. Not a hoof is to be left behind. Because every single thing that God has been able to give to us, what we have as being stewards of, are offerings of worship. Your time your talent, your substance, your family, whatever it is that you have under your purview is an offering to God. We will not allow Pharaoh and this world to hold anything that God did not give him. God gave us everything and everything Moses said. He said, not one hoof to be left behind. He says, we have to use some of them in worshiping the Lord our God. So God decides what he's going to use. And until then, when we get there, we will know what we are to use to worship the Lord. So it's our obedience to bring everything and then God's choice to choose what it is, what we have as a form of worship to him. Sometimes we choose what it is that we have to give him. When he's actually telling us what it is that he's selecting. And he has selected things like our giving, our tithes, our offering. His tithes, our offering. Things to give. Let's find out what he wants. And let him make that decision. Amen, church? Let's all stand as we prepare to give, as we make our declarations. I 
And as the ushers come, let's make our declaration shirts. Three and I am and what I believe changes the world. So today I declare God is in a good mood. He loves me all the time. Nothing can separate me from his love. Jesus' blood paid for everything. I will tell nations of what he has done. I am important. How he made me is amazing. I was designed for worship. My mouth establishes praise to silence the enemy. Everywhere I go becomes a perfect health zone. And with God, nothing is impossible. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Keep those hands going as we welcome our very own. Come on, let's honor him. Pastor Antonio. Come on, guys. We could do better than that. Come on. Let's thank God for the worship team. I'd like if you can just take a minute and do whatever it takes for you to be able to remain focused. If it means to sit down, sit down. If it means to remain standing, remain standing. I just really think the Lord wants us to continue to give him thanks for what he has been doing, for what he is doing and what, what he is going to do. Amen. Lord, we thank you. We thank you, Lord. Lord, we open our mouths and we declare our thanksgiving to you. Thank you, Lord, for your goodness. Thank you, Lord, for all that you have done. Thank you for everything that you are doing right now and things that you are about to do. We come before you again with thankful hearts, rejoicing that you're the true and the living God. You're God, almighty, worthy of our praise, worthy of our adoration. Oh, we magnify you tonight. We praise you, God. Glory, 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 glory. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. I want to encourage you to open your mouth and give him praise. Open your mouth and give him praise. There's something you can thank him for. Something you can thank him for. Something that he, I, want to, I want you to remember a miracle that he did in your life. There was a miracle that he did, and everyone, every one of you here has experienced a miracle. I want, I want you to begin to thank God again for that, for that miracle. You're, you're, you're drawing from the deep wells of the experience you had in him of his goodness. Thank him, thank him, thank him. Lord, we thank you, God. We give you the praise. We magnify you, Lord God. We glorify you, God. You're so wonderful. You're wonderful. You're wonderful. You're wonderful. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. 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 Lord, we thank you for that healing. We thank you for that miracle turnaround. We thank you for that breakthrough in that relationship. Glory, 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 glory. We thank you for that loved one turning to Jesus. We thank you for that friend who turned away from sin and rededicate their, rededicated their life to you, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. We're so thankful, God. We're so thankful, God. We're so thankful, God. We're not going to shut our mouths. We're going to open our mouths in praise and give you the glory that's due to you all the days of our lives, God. You gave, a, you gave us a mouth to declare your praise and sing to you a new song and magnify you, Lord. Thank you, God. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah, hallelujah. Wasn't Sunday a powerful service? Let's get, thank God for Sunday. Just give the Lord a clap, offering. Lord, we thank you for what you did Sunday, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We need to be thankful because God 
wants to do more. God wants to continue. God wants to continue. And we need to be able to steward things right. And one of the main ways that we steward what he is doing in our midst is to have a thankful heart. Never take it for granted what he's doing in your life. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen, 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 amen. Thank the Lord again, and you can hug up on somebody and have your seat. Man. I'm so looking forward to what God is going to be doing. There's so much more that he is wanting to do. Amen? You know, and, and I've been praying for quite a while, asking the Lord, uh, Lord, what does revival look like in the apostles' ministries? What does revival look like at TAM? What does revival look like in Londonville? What does revival look like in Trinidad and Tobago? Because, you know, if you're a student of, of history uh, and a student of revivals and outpourings, you know that God will show up in so many different ways. And Sunday, as we, you know, I was watching all the people that were coming up for prayer. I heard the Spirit of the Lord say, this is what revival looks like. And, I, and it's a part of, there is, of course, there are so many other things. But we don't want to miss anything. Anything. Amen. I want to encourage you to ask the Lord to open your eyes to see in your ears to hear what the Spirit of the Lord is doing right now and what He is saying right now. We can so often miss what God is doing because we have preconceived ideas of what a move of God is supposed to look like. We don't want to resist the Holy Spirit. And God forbid that we should ever grieve the Holy Spirit. Let him have his way. Let him have his way. Amen. Holy Spirit, we declare tonight your way, your will, however you want to do it, Lord. We say yes. We say yes to however you want to move. We let go of the misconceptions and preconceived ideas and traditions and even the revivals of the past. As wonderful as they were, they were. And God, you're still moving today. And we don't want to miss anything. We don't want to miss anything that you're doing in our midst and in the earth right now. We choose to be open. We choose to be receptive. We lay aside the dead traditions of men. We lay aside religiosity. We lay aside fear. So that we may have your move, Lord. But more than that, Lord God, we don't just want the move of God. We want the God of the move. We want you, Lord. You are our exceedingly great reward. And we declare that. You are our exceedingly great reward. We want you. We want you. We know that if we have you, we have everything. Everything. So come, Lord. Come, Lord. Come, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. Amen. I see what Sterling is saying about how it's so hard up here right now. Because the presence of God is in our midst. Amen. I want to continue on discipleship. And I want to look at a couple of things concerning what a disciple is like. Okay. So if you can take out your Bibles. If you could take out your notebook or your notepad or your notepad app, whatever it is, I want you to write these scriptures down and take them to heart. Because one of the things that God is calling us to as a church is to be a church of disciples. 
not just a church of members, not just a church of believers, not just a church of Christians, but a church that is full of people who have made a decision that they're going to follow Christ wherever He leads. Can I hear an amen? Amen. So the first thing we want to look at is from 2 Timothy chapter 2 in verses 3 and 4. A disciple is like a soldier. A disciple is like a soldier. In verse 3 it says, take with me your share of hardship. Say hardship. Now we don't like to hear words like that. We, we want to avoid hardship. But Paul is telling Timothy here, join with me in the hardship. Wow. Take with me your share of hardship, passing through the difficulties, which you are what? Which you are called to endure. Say, I am called to endure. You ask him, what's my calling, Lord? What's my calling, Lord? Well, part of your calling is to be able to endure. Amen? Yeah, just a few weeks ago again, I mean, and I was doing that for quite a couple of years, right? Why, God, am I going through this? Why? You know, I had, I had already an, a preconceived idea in my own mind. Okay, I'm going to go through this trial, and by this time it should be done, and by this time I should, I should have this that I'm believing for, and, 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 right? And it was like, that was my schedule, not God's schedule. And what I thought might have been days turned to weeks. Weeks to months and months to years, and the struggle continued. Why? Because God is preparing me, and God is preparing you for the time that we are living in right now. There is a grit that we must have to stand in this hour. Amen? So you're going through tough times because we are living in tough times. And we're thinking and hoping that it will be ending by tomorrow, but it might not. Who knows? 2024 might be one of the toughest years ever. Ooh. But where do we stand? When everything that can be shaken is being shaken right now, right in front of our eyes, where do we stand? God has called you to endure hardship like a good soldier of Jesus Christ. Say, I'm a soldier. Amen? You're a soldier. You're a warrior. Amen? Like a good soldier of Jesus Christ. No soldier in active service. Some of you are in active service for Jesus Christ. Every single one of us should be holding up our hands high. Every single one of us should be active in service right now. And if you're not, it's time to do that. The call is going forth. Amen. No soldier in active service gets entangled in the ordinary business affairs of civilian life. He avoids them so that he may please the one who enlisted him to serve. Now that doesn't mean that you are avoiding the entanglements of this life by neglecting your natural responsibilities. You still have to pay that bill next week. You still got to show up to work. Amen. It's not talking about that. It's talking about you not being entangled with all the worries of the world. That stuff that sabotages your faith. Amen? Don't worry about those things. Don't pursue those things in this world. Pursue Him. 
Those things that you need will come into your life. Amen? Place everything in God's hands. And ask him to show you what to do. And when he shows you, do it. Matthew chapter 6 verse 25. And then down to 31 to 34. It says, this is why I tell you. And this is Christ speaking here. This is why I tell you to never be worried about your life. He didn't say it's okay to worry sometimes. Well, you're exempt if you're a mom. You know, if you're a mom, you have a right to worry. No, you don't. This is Jesus talking here. Never. Say never. never. What does never mean? Never. Ah, we have some wise people here. Amen? Amen. Never means never. Never. Never be worried about your what? Never be worried about what? Life. Your life. That means everything that composes your life. For all that you need will be provided. Wow, that's a guarantee from God. In other words, we got to trust what he says. All that you need will be provided, such as food and water and clothing Everything your body needs. Isn't there more to your life than a meal? Isn't your body more than clothing? Verse 31. So then forsake your worries. Forsake them. Let them go. Why would you say what will we eat or what will we drink or what will we wear? For that is what? What? Unbelievers. Who? Unbelievers chase after this. There's so many of us who call ourselves believers chasing after what unbelievers are chasing after. The things of this world, but it's based on worry rather than faith. Faith is believing and acting on the promises of God, right? If you are a soldier for Jesus Christ, you know that you can give your all to serve him because you know the moment you enlisted into this army, you are provided for. Every country, and as far as I know, every country that I know of, when a citizen becomes a member of their army, that government is obligated, the citizens are obligated to pay for the livelihood of that soldier. When you gave your life to Jesus Christ and you enlisted and said yes to Jesus, that means that God promised to provide for everything. And it's so easy for us to be distracted into thinking and, and, and think, having this mentality that somehow God will not provide. There's no greater government than the kingdom of God. There's no greater leader or ruler than God himself. And you've enlisted into his army. You're his soldier. You're his warrior. So he's got your back. He's going to take care of your needs. If you do what he tells you to do, God is going to provide. That key is obedience. Obedience in trust. Doesn't your heavenly father already know the things your bodies require? So above all, constantly see God's kingdom. And his righteousness. Then all these less important things will be given to you. Where? How? Abundantly. Abundantly. Amen? Refuse to worry about tomorrow. Say, I'm not worried about tomorrow. Because God is already there. 
So refuse to worry about tomorrow, but deal, deal with each challenge that comes your way one day at a time. Tomorrow will take care of itself. You know, that lets me know that probably the biggest hindrance to your abundance is your worry. Ooh, it's quiet. Worrying is probably one of the biggest hindrances to you stepping into the abundance that God has promised. He promised abundance. It's right there. Amen? He promised it. All these things will be given to you abundantly. Say abundantly. Stop worrying. We need to stop being afraid. Amen? Stop be, being overly concerned if you're living for Jesus. Now, if you're not living for Jesus, well, then, yeah, okay, I could, I could understand. If you're not living for him, I could understand why you're so worried. I'd be worried, too. Because I know that you can't enjoy the abundance of the kingdom of God with one foot in the kingdom and one foot in the world. Philippians chapter 4 verses 6 and 7 says, Do not fret or worry. Instead of worrying, pray. Say pray. So you're a warrior, not a worrier. You're a warrior, not a worrier. It goes on and says, let petitions and praises shape your worries into prayers. Letting God know your concerns. Before you know it, a sense of God's wholeness, everything coming together for good will come and settle you down. Amen. You ever get all riled up over a situation? I've been there. I know, okay, you haven't, but I have. I face situations where all of a sudden I feel uneasy. And when I come to God in sincere prayer and I spend that time in his presence, all of a sudden that uneasiness begins to leave my soul and a peace begins to come in because this is the promise. If you cover that situation in prayer with thanksgiving, the peace of God which surpasses all understanding will begin to guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Everything coming together for good will come and settle you down. It's wonderful what happens when Christ displaces worry at the center of your life. So be aware that worry seeks to take center stage in your life, it desires to rule in the place of Christ. The key to overcoming worry is a prayer life full of thanksgiving. Amen? A disciple is like a warrior in these aspects. A disciple is a warrior. That's number one. Number two, a disciple is like an athlete. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 5, If anyone competes as an athlete in competitive games, he is not crowned with the wreath of victory unless he competes according to the rules. How many of you have ever been in, in competitive games before? Oh, that's a good bit, right? You know that there are rules to the game that you have to follow, Right? Let me give you a couple of rules. Rule number one, a great athlete plays to win. A great athlete plays to win. 1 Corinthians 9, 24. Isn't it obvious that all runners on the racetrack keep on running to what? To win. But only one receives the victor's prize. Yet each one of you must run the race to be victorious. Some of us are just happy to be in the race. No, we have to be in the race with the goal to win. Don't find yourself saying things like, Oh, whatever you want to give me, Lord, I will be content with that. Que sera, sera. 
What will be, will be. No! The Bible says you will have whatever you say. The baton is in your hand. Come on. We're in this race to win. God wants you to go for the gold. Don't just say, well, whatever, God. I'm content. Lord God, you just give me whatever. There was this Christian guy one time. He wanted to get married. And he kept praying, Lord, whatever you want to give me. Whatever you want to give me, Lord. Just as long as she could sing real good. Well, he finally found somebody. And he got married. And he woke up early the next morning. The first morning of the honeymoon. And he looked over at his wife asleep there next to him. And suddenly he shook her and he woke her up. Honey, honey, please sing. Please sing. Y'all get that by tomorrow. You know, the Bible says that if you delight yourself in the Lord, He will give you the desires of your heart. Amen? He wants you to exercise your faith. I never heard of really good athletes who don't exercise. If you want to be a good athlete for Jesus, you have to exercise and you have to exercise your faith. So you're believing God for a house? What kind of house? What does it look like? Two bedroom, three bedroom, five bedrooms. Amen? You're believing God for a vehicle? What kind of vehicle? Do you want a Maserati? Do you want a Bentley? What do you want? Write it down. Be specific. God wants you to exercise your faith. Amen? We're going for the goal. We live in a society today that rewards laziness, that offers rewards without merit, awards for participation. But in the kingdom, we are commanded to go for the goal. We're called to run the race with the goal to win. Guys, it, I'm telling you, it, it it irks me. And I, I'm, I was never a sports guy. I was a band nerd. But when I hear people in the school system, even teachers saying, you know, oh, you know, it's not about winning. It's about participation. No, that doesn't line up with the kingdom. If you're in a sport, get in it to win. If you're in a fight, you better be in it to win. There was a general in World War II called General Patton. He used to say, you don't win a war by dying for your country. You win a war by making that other poor fool die for his country. (laughs) We got to be in this to win. Amen. Amen. True Christianity, the Christianity of the Bible, is not for the weak. And if you're feeling weak, you know what the Bible says? Let the weak say, I am. Hallelujah. You know, there was a time when Abraham's faith was weak. But it didn't stay that way. Because every time he exercised his faith, it got stronger and stronger. To the place where it says, even when there was no hope, Abraham believed. You can get to the place where you have exercised your faith so much. That it doesn't matter what anybody says. What you're seeing with your natural eyes. What your feelings are telling you. You know that God has said it, so it is done. Good is done. You can get there. But it begins with you exercising your faith concerning that challenge you're facing right now. Amen? First Timothy chapter 6 verse 12 says, So fight with faith for the winner's prize. 
Lay your hands upon eternal life to which you were called and about which you made the good confession before the multitude of witnesses. You fight with faith to obtain the prize. 2 Timothy chapter 4, verses 7 through 8 says, I have fought an excellent fight. This is Paul talking here towards the end of his life. I have fought an excellent fight. I have finished my full course with all my might, and I have kept my heart full of faith. You could run your course with might. You could keep your heart full of faith. And if you do it, verse 8, it says there's a crown of righteousness waiting in heaven for you. Paul said there's a crown of righteousness waiting in heaven for me. And I know that my Lord will reward me on his day of righteous judgment. You can know that you're going to be rewarded for your obedience. Amen. And this crown is not only waiting for me. It's not only wait, wasn't just waiting for Paul. He said, but for all who love and long for his unveiling. Amen. Rule number two, a great athlete is self-disciplined. 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 25, a true athlete will be disciplined in every respect. Practicing constant self-control. Say self-control. You know that's one of the fruits of the Spirit? In Galatians chapter 5. Practicing constant self-control in order to win a laurel reef that quickly withers. But we run our race to win a victor's crown that will last forever. For that reason, I don't run just for exercise or box like one throwing aimless punches. But I train like a champion athlete. This is Paul talking here again. I train like a champion athlete. I subdue my body. And get it under my control so that after preaching the good news to others, I myself won't be disqualified. God is calling us into harvest. We see that. We've seen this happening right here, right now. You see what happened Sunday? God is calling this body of believers into the harvest field. But you have to set yourself and be ready to go out and work. Revival is spelled W-O-R-K. So you got to get yourself fit for the work that is before you. You got to subdue your body. You got to get into some self-control. Amen? So often our biggest obstacle isn't the devil, but our own indiscipline. Too many of us are ruled by our own bodies, controlled by our appetites, And manipulated by our feelings. Guys, one of the best ways to to stop all that and get your body back into submission is fasting and praying. Fasting and praying. Fasting. It's not, we're not talking about eating as fast as you can. I still like to say, well, I'm on a seafood diet. All the food I see, I eat. No, that's called being greedy. God wants you to prepare because harvest is already here. And God is bringing into place the individuals and things that need to be put in place here. So that we can reap a harvest. You have to get ready. You have to get ready, guys. Amen? Train. Like Paul trained. Paul did it on purpose. Why? Because he, was, he knew he was running a race. And he was determined to go for the gold and win the prize. And he did. And he was found faithful. Amen? You know, there are two main obstacles that can keep you from running and winning the race of faith. Hebrews chapter 12, verses 1 and 2 says, As for us, we have all these great witnesses who encircle us like clouds, so we must let go of every wound that has pierced us. 
and the sin we so easily fall into. Firstly, there are wounds from the past. We have to forgive and be forgiven. We have to let the Lord heal those wounds or they will trip us up every single time we try to move forward in our Christian life. We have to let God heal our wounds. And it's one thing too. Let me take it a step further. Maybe you have forgiven and, and there is forgiveness, but has that wound been healed? Have you allowed God to encounter you in that area of pain to bring healing in your heart? I want to give you that opportunity tonight to, for the Lord to heal those wounds because he's called you into the race. And God wants you to win it. The sin which so, we so easily fall into. Secondly, that, that's the sin we fall into so easily. It's talking about habitual sins. Addictions, bad habits, unruly appetites, fears and phobias, and lustful desires. Remember, lust isn't just about sex, guys. Lust can, gluttony is a lust for food. Greed is a lust for money. There's different types of lust. It's time to let them go so that we can run the race. Amen? Goes on and says, then we will be able to run life's marathon race with passion and determination. That lets me know that if we don't let go of those wounds and we don't let go of those sins, we will not be passionate. It stifles your passion for Jesus Christ. And God wants you to be on fire. God wants you to be on fire. Let Him heal you. And let go of those sins. God wants you on fire for Him. He wants you to run this race with passion. And He wants you to run it with determination. Don't let these things make you stumble. The path, it says, has already been marked out before us. In other words, the, 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 the end of the race and the prize are already set for you. You just got to be willing and go for it. Rule number three, a great athlete must be focused. Say focus. In Hebrews chapter 12, verse 2, it goes on and says, We look away from the natural realm and we focus our attention and expectation unto Jesus, who birthed faith within us and who leads us forward into faith's perfection. His example is this, because his heart was focused on the joy of knowing that you would be his, he endured the agony of the exalted at the right hand of the throne of God. So Jesus was focused on you becoming his prize. And we're to be focused on Jesus becoming our prize. Isn't that beautiful? That's our focus. That's what we're running after. That's what we're disciplining ourselves for. So that we could have him. Amen. The third thing a disciple is like is like a farmer. See, a farmer. In 2 Timothy chapter 2, verses 6 and 7, it says the hard-working farmer, not the lazy farmer, not the slacker farmer, the hard-working farmer who labors to produce crops ought to be the first to receive his share of the crops. It's all still in that same, the same tone. The same, it's all interconnected. Now he's talking about receiving benefits. Verse 7, think over the things I am saying. Grasp their application, for the Lord will grant you insight and understanding in everything. So a good farmer is a hard worker. A good farmer will receive the first fruits of the harvest. And a good farmer has the opportunity to give his first fruits away for an even greater harvest. You know the Bible says that God gives seed to the who? The sower.
God's called you to be like a farmer. God wants you to sow. God wants you to give. God wants you to be generous so that you can see harvest greater and greater and greater. And the more you give, you can actually give yourself. You can give. Let me try to word it correctly. You can give yourself out of poverty. What do you mean to give to yourself? No, give away. And by giving away, the harvest that will come will take you out of poverty. It doesn't matter the, the economy of this world. You know you have dual citizenship. You have citizenship in Trinidad and Tobago. But as a believer in Jesus Christ, you have citizenship in the kingdom of heaven. And Trinidad and Tobago probably has limited resources. But the kingdom of heaven doesn't have any limitations. The kingdom of heaven doesn't have limited resources. And the key to tapping into those resources is generosity. So God says, be like a farmer and sow. Be like a farmer and sow. Be like a farmer and sow. And the farmer doesn't just sow. He waters the seed. He keeps the land properly so that plant can grow. He watches over the growth of the crop until it's ready for harvest. And then he reaps the harvest. And then he plants so that he can reap an even greater harvest the next time. That's what we've got to go for. But it takes work. Amen. Verse, Proverbs 3, verses 9 and 10 says, Glorify God with all your wealth. It didn't say glorify God with all your poverty. But pastor, I'm poor. I will give. Give. Every chance to get. Everywhere. Everywhere. There are opportunities you run into probably every single day to give. We don't have anything in my pocket. We'll give of your time. Well, I hardly have time. We'll give a smile. Start giving. Not just within the context of the church, but certainly within the context of the church. But what about outside too? Glorify God with all your wealth, honoring Him with your first fruits. How do we honor Him with our first fruits? We give it to Him. With every increase that comes to you. Then it says, watch this, then... Every dimension of your life will overflow with blessings from an uncontainable source of inner joy. Just as a side note, generous people are joyful people. Greedy people are miserable. Like they say in Trinidad, they're miserable in their tail. So a disciple is like a soldier ready to count the cost and obey the commandments, the commands of the officer, the commanding officer, right in the middle of the battle. A disciple is like an athlete doing what it takes to win and doing it right. A disciple is like a farmer working hard at reaping a great harvest and willingly giving the Lord of its first and best fruits. Preparing for greater harvest. Amen. God's preparing us for greater harvest. He's preparing us for greater harvest. But some things we have to let go of. So that we can be ready. And some things we have to embrace. 
God is calling us to embrace the lifestyle of faith. Not to visit faith every once in a while when we, we f- are faced with a big challenge that we know we can't handle ourselves. No, but to live a lifestyle of faith every single day. Amen? I, I tell folks, that, I mean, this is the longest I've gone without a vehicle since I learned to drive. I, I didn't learn to drive that long ago. I learned to drive right here in Trinidad and Tobago. I didn't learn to drive in the States. I learned to drive here. So, well, when I went back to the States to, and I was up there for three years, I was easy to get my license up there. You get it? Anyway. <laughs> the roads out here can be a little challenging. But it's the longest I've ever gone without a vehicle. And I'm saying, God, what, what's going on? What's going on? I'm sowing into this. I'm believing for it. I'm thanking God for it every day. What's going on? There's other things that I'm believing God for. I'm believing God for my own house and land. Amen? I pray, I say, God, you call me here. You got to give me a house here. I have siblings, they have their own homes already, and, I'm, and they're not living for you. I'm living for you, and I still don't have my own home. Well, what's going on? You know what God showed me? That he's preparing me. But it's already mine. Yeah. So I'm walking up the road in this Beautiful, sunny weather that we've been having lately. And I'm thanking the Lord for my car. God, you're good. God, you're good. Amen. And when a taxi pulls up and the taxi's all beat up and it's smelling funny inside and it's saying, amigo, short? I said, yes, I'm a short amigo. I sit in that vehicle and I say, thank God for my own vehicle. It's done. It's done. It's done. When I'm passing by Point Pleasant Park and I see them nice five-bedroom homes, two stories with swimming pool in the backyard, I say, thank the Lord for my own house. (laughs) It's already done. But why has, he been ta- why has he been taking too long, so long? Because he's building something in me that is far more precious than any car or house or land. And that's called character. Amen. Character. Harvest is coming. It's like I hear in in my heart God saying, it's not just the harvest of souls. Yes, it's the harvest of souls, but there's a financial harvest on the way. There's a harvest of cars and lands and, and houses and relationships and breakthroughs beyond our wildest dreams. For those who say, yes, I'm going to be a disciple. Of Jesus Christ. Amen. You know while you're seated. If you could bow your head. Close your eyes. Stop confessing the problem. Stop confessing and focusing on what you don't have. Start confessing the answer. Start thanking God for what he has promised because his promises, all his promises are yes and amen. But you have to let go of some things so that you can grab a hold of those other things that are important. If you're here tonight and you want to let go you want to let go of the, the wounds of the past that are stifling your passion. 
and you want to let go of sins which keep cropping up in your life, I'd like if you could stand right where you're at. Lord God, you know every single one of us through and through. And I thank you for those that, are, that have stood up, Lord. I thank you for those who can confidently have a seat and know that they're not struggling with these things. And that's a blessing. Because that's a blessing everyone that is standing is going to step into right now, tonight. Lord, I pray for everybody that is standing right now that you would heal them of every wound of the past. You know, if there's somebody that's hurt you, forgive them. If you need to go to them and you can, you need to go to them as soon as possible and ask them for forgiveness. Right now, as you are forgiving, or you're asking God for forgiveness, I'm going to ask the Lord to encounter you right there and to bring healing in your heart. Holy Spirit, I just thank you for bringing healing right now. In every heart that is standing right now for healing from past wounds. Just receive the healing of the Lord right now. He came to heal the brokenhearted. Let him heal you right now. Let him make you whole. Let him make you whole. I see that the Lord is just working in your heart even right now. And he's encountering you. Let him touch you right now with his supernatural presence. There's that healing right now. Some of you, you're, you, you, you've only been able to see vaguely and hear very little concerning the spirit realm and concerning the voice of God. Right now, that veil is being removed. You're going to be able to hear the Lord more clearly than ever before direction more clearly than ever before seeing things in the spirit more clearly than ever before thank you lord god for the lifting of the fog right now in the name of jesus some of there's some of you here any little thing you want to break down and cry and it's not just because you're an emotional person but it was because of that wound god is healing you right now god is healing you right now god is raising up a company of people like Ezekiel, a forehead of flint, a forehead of flint, but a heart of flesh. What does that mean? A soft heart, but a tough exterior. Tough. God is strengthening you right now. Hallelujah. For those who are standing because of recurring sins, I want you to pray this prayer. Lord, forgive me for going back to those things over and over again. I lay it at your feet right now and I forsake those sins which so easily beset me. Those sins, Lord God, that are like weights that keep me from running the race. I lay them down right now and I turn away from them. And I turn to you, God. And I thank you, Lord God, for healing me and delivering me of the lie that I have believed that I will always have to be in bondage to that sin. That's broken in the name of Jesus right now. Every lying spirit has to go right now, right now. He whom the Son sets free is free indeed. That means you're free for sure. Thank you, Lord God, right now for the anointing. Here comes a greater level of his anointing on you right now. Just receive it. Begin to thank God. Begin to thank God. Begin to thank God. Begin to thank God. Hallelujah. I'm telling you that this is called to be a harvesting church. A harvesting church. Harvesting souls, financial harvest, harvest and breakthroughs and situations, harvest in the area of healing and deliverance, breakthroughs. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's all stand.
Lord, we're so grateful for what you're doing in this house. Lord, I pray that you would show every single one of us our part. Lord, and I pray for everyone here that every one of us will do our part. Every joint must supply. Every gift worked. Every anointing. Every level of faith exercised so that we could grow in Christ, into Christ, into the fullness of the head who is Christ Jesus, our Lord. Lord, we thank you right now. We thank you for the increase right now, the increase of anointing, the increase of grace, the increase of revelation, the increase of physical strength to do your will bless your people and we thank you and give you the honor in Jesus name Amen Amen Let's thank the Lord